goodness me. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to talk to you about prisons, which is, um, I'm afraid so there's not a lot of jokes in my presentation because it's a very serious subject. I'm going to remind you, first of all, that when we talk about anything to do with public policy, like prisons or penal issues, it's about people. And so I'm going to tell you about a couple of people because it's really important to remember that every four days, somebody takes their own life in prison. So when people say prisons are like a holiday camp, no, they're not. They're really not. Greg was 18 when he took his own life in prison. He came from a, a happy family. He was the youngest, the baby of, of five. Um, and he had mental health problems and depression. And he ended up in prison. And he took his own life in Glen Parver when he was 18. Now, the prison knew that he was suicidal, knew that he had problems, because he had welts around his neck where he tried to hang himself previously in the community. And yet they put him into a cell by himself. And when they, the prison guards opened up uh, his cell the next day, he was hanging, he was dead. Um, I'm going to tell you now about Sarah. Again, Sarah, age 18. Um, again, from a happy family. Uh, a single parent family, like mine, and her mother was a teacher, like I used to be, and Sarah's the same name as my daughter, and in fact, this Sarah Campbell died when she was 18, which is the same age as my daughter was. Uh, she took an overdose in prison as a cry for help, but the prison didn't call the ambulance quickly enough, and by the time she got to the hospital, she was dying, and the prison and the hospital staff didn't call her mum, so her mum didn't even know she was there until after she was dead. Now her mum was called Pauline, and we worked with Pauline, as I'd worked with Greg's family as well. Um, and she really never recovered. The grief was so great that she really never recovered from the loss of her only child. And five years after Sarah died, Pauline went to her grave and took an overdose herself, and she died. This is the sort of tragedy that happens in prisons, that always remember when people talk about prisons that it is individuals we're talking about. Now, I'm going to give you two ideas because I really want to change things. I don't want to have to go to another inquest and hold the hand of a mum whose child has died. I don't want to have to work with families of people who've lost loved ones in prison. So I'm going to give you two ideas. One is a change in principle because I think our penal system is not working. And the other is a practical suggestion. So first of all, the principle. Now, we, we lock people up in prisons that look like this. Sometimes there are two people in a cell like that. Um, they wear pyjamas and they flop around all day. They don't do anything useful. And it's all about punishment. Our prison system and our penal system is based all on punishment. It's about someone has done harm They've hurt someone, they've hurt a community, sometimes obviously they've hurt themselves as well, and what we do to them is we punish them, we hurt them. Our whole system is based on punishment, it's based on revenge, and I want to change that. I want to have a system where the basic principle is trying to make things better, is getting individuals to make amends for the wrong they've done. Well, I recognise that people do things that are harmful, of course we have to respond to that. But couldn't we do something, instead of saying, you've hurt, so we're going to hurt you, we could do something which would restore the damage, that would heal the damage that they've done. That should be a principle which underpins everything that we do in, in, a, in a justice system. We should also understand that a justice system can't make everything better you can at least try to, to heal some of the damage that's been done by crime, but it can't solve all of society's, all, all of society's problems. So we should have a system which is shrinking, which is less. We can do better with it, but we should be doing less. You can't solve people's mental health problems by sending them to prison. You can't solve somebody's educational deficits by sending them to prison. You can't solve any of the, the drug addiction, the mental health or the educational problems, the homeless problems, any of those things, by, by the use of the criminal justice system. So we should do less and we should do better. So what I want to do is I want to abolish the system as it is. It's not working. More people come out of prison and commit crimes. 
It's not even 50-50. It's the majority of people who go into prison at the moment come out and commit another crime. Now, that is not a system that's working for anybody. It's not a system that's working for uh, taxpayers. It's not a system that's working for uh, victims. It's not a system that's working for the staff or for communities or indeed for the people who've committed the crimes. If you think it costs about a million pounds to keep somebody in prison for 20 years, and what do they do all day? They are wearing baggy tracksuits and they spend most of their time sleeping on a, a sordid bunk. Uh, they, if they're lucky, they can get a little bit of work, maybe does a wing cleaner, they get paid seven, eight, nine, possibly 10 pounds a week. Out of that, they have to buy all the extra bits because the food budget for a prison is, uh, is a couple of pounds, so they're hungry. And their families have to keep them. If they're lucky, they've got a family to give them some extra money. Often the families are on benefits, so they're scrimping and saving and sending money in so that the prisoner can buy a phone, uh, phone credit to phone them up, maybe a couple of times a week, uh, to say hello to their kids. So this is the sort of system, this is what we're doing with people. It's completely silly. It doesn't work. It's not helping to keep us safer. It's not helping to change lives. It's not turning people into magic citizens. If you think if you come out of a cell like that for um, after spending months and months, hardly ever getting out of your cell, maybe sharing it with somebody else, with a toilet in the cell, so if your cellmate wants to go to the toilet, they do it there in front of you. You eat in there and you, uh, you live in that place for months and months. This is, has to change. We have to change it. What I want to do is to abolish prisons like that and say that most people who commit crimes should be making amends for the wrong they do in the community. If somebody has committed a crime that is so serious, so dangerous, that they have to go into custody for public safety reasons, and I accept that. I've met lots of people who are very dangerous indeed, and they have to be contained in some kind of um, establishment. But I want it to be a completely different experience. What I want to do is quite revolutionary. And nobody, apart from me, has ever done this before. And that's I want to get prisons to work. It sounds such a simple idea, doesn't it? It's so obvious. It's what we all do. Some of you will do. Um, it's I want prisons to be employed. I want them to have the opportunity to work. So that they get up in the morning, they have a shower, they have breakfast, they get dressed, and they go to work, and they earn a real wage, and they pay tax, and they can help to keep their families. So that if they're going to spend 10 or 15 or 20 years in prison, they've actually got the opportunity to work. Now, I did this. I'm the, I, think, I think I'm the only person in the world that's ever run a proper business inside a prison. And I, I only employed a few, a few people, but it was meant to be a prototype for how it could work. And my prisoners, it was a graphic design studio, and they did work for external people. And we paid them a proper wage. And they paid tax. And I think that's incredibly important, that, the, that a prisoner is still a citizen inside prison. They're just inside a prison. They're still a citizen. And paying tax is an incredibly important part of that. When the prison service found out that our prisoners were paying tax, they said they couldn't pay tax because that indeed did make them citizens. And so they re refunded all the tax they'd paid and I closed the business down. But I still think that that is the way forward. I think that prisoners should be doing something useful every day, have the opportunity to, you can't have forced labor. So that, those are my, that's my outline for how, why things should change, because I don't want people to die in prison, nor do I want them to come out and commit more crimes, nor do I want them to commit crimes inside prison, which is what happens um, a lot at the moment. Prisons are very violent, dangerous places, because if you cage lots of people together with nothing to do, they, like battery chickens, they will, they will behave badly, because they're frustrated, they're angry, and of course they're frightened, and of course prisons are awash with drugs. So that is a failing system. We need to change the principle and we need to change the practice as well. Things can change. We can do things better. We can change the system. We can shrink the prison system so that it's only there for the people who really need it. We can invest that money uh, in the community 
into, uh, we can, it's called justice reinvestment. Uh, we can reinvest that into communities and into managing people in the community much more safely. That way we can do better, we can do less, and in the end we can have safer communities, we can have less crime, and we can have fewer people in prison. Thank you for listening to me.